All right, guys, let's get back into our uh, exponent properties and rules. And let's just think of a couple um, kind of review things here. If I were to say like 3 to the first, 3 to the second, 3 to the third. Okay, and let's just think about what each of those mean. Okay, remember, so something to the first power is just going to be itself. Um, something to the second power, 3 to the second is 3 times 3, um, which of course we know is 9. Um, something to the third power, so 3 to the third is 3 times 3 times 3 again, so 27. Okay, I'm going to move these down here. Um, and let's think about, we talked a little bit briefly on the uh, last section about negative exponents. Let's just get the first two here. Um, and let's think about, remember, a negative exponent, again, means you need to do a reciprocal, right? So 3 to the negative first really means 1 over 3 to the first, which means 1 over 3. Okay, 3 to the negative second is 1 over 3 to the second power. Okay, because again, the exponent's negative, so we do the reciprocal, right? We throw it in the denominator and make it positive. So that's 1 over 9. So my question to you guys is, in the middle here, would be 3 to the 0 power, right? And I want to know, what what do we do with something to the 0 power, okay? So if we take a look at our pattern, um, to get from, as, as we work our way this way, right, notice what's happening to the, uh, to the answers, right? It's 27, then it goes down to 9, then it goes down to 3. So as we work backwards, isn't the pattern appear to be dividing by 3 as we work backwards? Okay, so if we were to continue that, right, 27 divided by, by 3 gets me 9, 9 divided by 3 gets me 3. If I were to divide the 3 by 3, we would get 1. Okay, and then taking that 1 divided by 3, we would get 1 third, and so on. So that seems to um, be reasonable that 3 to the 0 power would need to equal 1. Okay, so let's look at that in a little more depth um, and see if there's another way to think about that. Okay, so if we take a look here, this is uh, back into the textbook now. Um, let's just jump into example A. If we want to simplify 7 over 7, okay, using exponents and then explain the result. Um, so first off, we could say, um, we could rewrite the fraction by expressing the numerator and denominator in exponential form. Right, so 7 over 7 could be written this way, right? 7 to the first over 7 to the first. And then we saw the rule in the previous section as well. When you're doing a division problem, right, we end up subtracting exponents. Okay, so when we jump down here to step 2, 7 to the first over 7 to the first, we said we can subtract the exponents. Okay, and 1 minus 1, of course, is 0. So this equals 7 to the 0 power. Okay, now go back to what the original expression looked like. 7 over 7, right? Let me just write this over here. 7 over 7, something divided by itself we know is 1. Okay, so we just kind of showed going through these steps that 7 to the 0 power, okay, or basically anything to the 0 power is going to equal 1. Okay, so that's going to be another rule we'll add to the mix. Anything to the zero power, no matter what the base is, will always equal one. Okay, we showed that a little bit in the uh, first page when we showed the pattern, and then uh, we can see it as well based on the uh, subtracting exponents. Okay, so let's look at a couple of these. Um, try these A, and don't overthink these. Um, so y to the zero power, something to the zero power equals one. Okay, it does not equal zero. It equals 1. 9 to the 0 power equals 1. 125 to the 0 power equals 1. Okay? Um, so, I mean, you can verify in a calculator if you ever get confused or if you think that it should equal 0. Um, note that it just does not equal 0. Okay? So same thing in the, in the check your understanding here. doesn't matter how big the number is, right? 83,567. If it's being raised to the 0 power, it equals 1. Okay, b to the fourth over b to the fourth, you can think of it a couple different ways. One option would be to subtract exponents, like we did in the last section. So this would equal b to the zeroth power, which of course we know is one. Okay, or also just think about it like more basically, you know, some you have something being divided by itself. That always equals one. 
Okay, so either way you do that, these are gonna equal one. I'm going to do a couple examples on my own. Let's let's recall some, some of the rules that we have so far. Um, let's, we'll do a little simple example. Like if you have something to a power times something to a power. Okay, right, remember the rule on that? Since it's a multiplication problem, we would add the exponents. So it would become four to the three plus two, which would be four to the fifth. Right, and the reason that worked is that four to the third is four times four times four, right? And four to the second was four times four. Okay, so when we multiply four, when we multiply those three and those two more, it gives us a total of five factors of four, right? Okay, so that's the old, old example. That's when you're multiplying. Okay, the new thing I want you to think about, and it's going to look a little bit kind of similar, is if it were to be something like this. 4 to the 3rd, but let's say that whole thing is to another power. Okay, notice how it's different than the previous problem. Okay, the previous example was 4 to the 3rd times 4 to the 2nd. Okay, the new one here on the bottom is 4 to the 3rd, and that whole thing is squared. So if we think about how that one works... Okay, 4 to the 3rd, of course, is this, 4 times 4 times 4, and then when you square something, right, to square something means times it by itself. So we're going to have this 4 times 4 times 4 times itself, 4 times 4 times 4, right? So how many total factors of 4 are there over here? Well, we have the three and then three more, right? So this really equals four to the sixth power, okay? So notice in this example, we did not add these exponents like we did up here. We actually multiplied the exponents. Three times two is six, okay? So there's a rule, previous page, I really wanna make sure because these are the ones that sometimes get mixed up. Um, so don't rush through these. Okay, make sure we're clear on the difference. So a problem like this, you see the base written twice. Okay, and that was when we added exponents. And then the new section here was you only have one base being raised to a power, but then that is raised to another power. And that's when you multiply exponents. All right. All right, so let's take a look at another example here. Um, okay, for these examples here, um, we'll just go to example B. When an exponential expression is raised to a power, you multiply the exponents to simplify. Okay, so look, this one kind of has similar numbers. Um, 7 to the 3rd squared is going to end up equaling 7 to the 6th power. Okay, so let's walk through the try these B and uh, just make sure we're comfortable on those. Okay, so um, we have 6 to the 3rd and then that's being raised to another power. So there are two exponents, right? The base only appears once. This is an exponential to another power. So that's when we would multiply. Keep the base the same. This would be 6 to the 12th power. Okay, the next one, same thing. It's a power to another power. So it's going to be n, 7 times 5 is 35. Okay, and then finally, 12 to the 6th to the 3rd is going to end up being 12 to the 18th power. Okay, we're multiplying exponents in that case. So one other. Okay, let's just try just a couple more. Um, simplify these, write your answer in exponential form. Okay, so we have n squared to the fifth power. Okay, so that is a power to another power. We will multiply and end up with n to the tenth. Okay, number four here, seven to the fourth, raised to the fourth again going to be 7 to the 16th power. All right, and let's walk through some of these at the end of the lesson. Those are really short sections. Let's just do a, a few more examples. Um, number 6. Let me just rewrite it. So we have some room 9 to the 0 times 6 to the 12th squared. Okay. So let's think of this piece by piece. Okay, 9 to the 0. Anything to the 0 equals 1. Okay, and then we have 6 to the 12th squared. It's power to a power. We're going to multiply those. 12 times 2 is 24. So we have 1 times 6 to the 24th 
and 1 times anything is just that thing, so our answer is 6 to the 24th power. All right, how about number 7? Seven? 17 to the 9th power, then to the 3rd power. So again, it's a power to a power, so we're going to keep the base and we're going to multiply the 9 times 3 to get 17 to the 27th power. Okay, similarly, number 8 is a power to a power, so W to the 4 times 5 is 20. And let's see, look, number 9, think about this. How could we explain the product of 10,324 to the 0 times 8,576 to the 0? How could we do that with mental math? Those are some big numbers, right? Do you really think we could do that without a calculator? I think we can. Okay, look at this number, right? And look at this number. They're both just something to the zero power. Okay, so that first number is one. The second number is one, right? And one times one is one. All right, so that is it. Um, again, just let me let me go.